Welcome everyone. We are back. We have been very consistent lately. <laughs> woo woo. Proud of us. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe and like. I'm Nosra. I'm Suya. And uh, today we have a very interesting guest, don't we? Do. we? She has such an interesting story. Um, when she popped up on our request form, mm-hmm. I was like, let's interview her. She's got a good angle, isn't it? Yes. Also, if you did send a request form, we're getting through them. But as you can tell, we this is a very long list. So it we're is. getting through them. We promise we're getting through them. And Lieb here is proof of that. So we are getting through them. <laughs> Please just bear with us, okay? So let's get into this episode. Hi, Andalib. Hi, guys. How are you? Introduce <laughs> us, uh, yourself. Uh, my name is Andalib Anwar. Uh, Anwar is my like uh, my family name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I kept that after I got married just because I feel like it's my personality. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually born and raised in Norway, Oslo. I lived there my entire life. Or we moved to Pakistan for like one year, but that was mm. it. I and love Oslo. then, yeah, I got married uh, from someone in London. And... Uh, eventually moved to UK. Mm-hmm. But I haven't been living in London, actually. I've been living in... Uh, it's a village not far away from Birmingham. Oh, mm. wow. Yeah, I know you, you've you been to Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. Her it's favorite not the place. Best. <laughs> I'm just glad... Like, I don't live in Birmingham, but it's like an hour drive. Mm-hmm. So it's quite wow. far still. Uh, <clears throat> it's up north in Shrewsbury. I oh, don't know wow. if you've heard of it. I've heard of Shrewsbury. I have heard of it, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's quite remote. Uh, but my husband, he's a doctor, so he got his uh, training there. Mashallah. So Love it was like, it wasn't that choice, but... Yeah. Um, they do, they move you around, don't they? They do. If for you to reach certain levels in um, mm-hmm. in the field, they yeah, can send the you fur- anywhere. Yeah, and the further away the place is, the more likely you are to get it, basically. Because the competition is less. That's true. Because no one want to take the, like... That's true. The remote places. Um, so we ended up there. Uh, but when I came, I came with a uh, six-month-year-old baby. Nah, oh. Yeah, baby. Uh, she was born uh, 2022 September uh, in Norway. So nice. I went back to Norway to for my third trim- uh, second and third trimester, and I was like basically going to have her there. Mm-hmm. That was the plan, and that's what happened, uh, kind of, because she was born early. She was born uh, prematurely. Uh, in week 28 oh. yeah so she was uh, what you call uh not like extreme preemie but very pre- premature oh was there a reason why she came yeah out so early? i had something called p pro mm. it stands for premature preterm rupture of the membranes oh. and um yeah it happened in week 26 actually so I stayed pregnant for another two weeks. I had to be in the hospital back then. Yeah. And I stayed there, uh, uh, couldn't move from the bed, basically. That's mm. what I was told. Uh, but it, it's like, if you look at the research, they don't really say you have to, but it's better to be on the safe side mm-hmm. because you're still leaking. Um, uh, Amniotic fluid? Yeah. No. And you keep producing it. So oh. it doesn't like go it doesn't away. It stop, yeah. Uh, but you keep leaking it. Is what? there any pain? Yeah. What, how, how did you, no. like, is, what's the cause? Uh, so the cause is often unknown. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, just to clarify, I'm also a, a, a graduated as a doctor in 2022. Oh, wow. so oh, I know some of the terminology, even though I don't have yeah. experience from the field. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the cause is unknown. Actually, I was oh. told before I was, they decided that I was gonna have a C-section. Yeah. Uh, they told me that there's nothing you did that caused this. So mm-hmm. remember that before we like start everything. Mm-hmm. We don't want you to feel any kind of guilt. And that was so actually reassuring. Yeah. Because I kept way. thinking that, yeah. Oh. So I kept thinking that maybe, because I, I love walking and running. Yeah. So I stopped running while I was pregnant, but I, I kept walking. So I used to like walk. 10,000 steps yeah. here and there and I did some yoga yeah. that was it but and I, I kept feeling like maybe that's what caused it mm. uh, like because uh, the day it happened I had walked around 9,000 steps mm. and I was working at that time too okay at a hospital so you have to walk a lot mm-hmm. uh, so but it was so reassuring that the doctor said that um, mm. and it, it's really also scary. nice to tell people that yeah. that doctor actually said that there's nothing that could have been like done to avoid it. Yeah. 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 You know, every day we learn about new things. Yeah. And th- every, every day there's like, 
I know. It's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> no, when you look at it, it's actually a huge like risk you're taking carrying a baby. Like, so there was no pain. You just no, saw like no fluid pain. coming out. So, kind so of what thing. happened is that I was uh, uh, when I came home that day, I was really tired. So I went mm. uh, I went to bed, and then I woke up just feeling like some uh, like water was gushing out. Oh my god! And I was like, did I pee myself? Because it can happen, right? Yeah. yeah. Because it's pressure on your bladder and all of that. And then I went to the bathroom and I was like, no, this is this doesn't smell like pee. Yeah. Uh, so I told my mom, uh, and then I called the um, uh, emergency department. You're supposed to actually call directly to the um, what do you call the the labor ward. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And she was like, okay, just keep walking back and forth. If you keep leap, uh, leaking into a pad, still, uh, it means that it's uh, it's um, the fluid. And it's yeah. not pee. Uh, so I was wow. like, yeah, I'm still leaking. And he was like, oh my God. Because then I was like, what if it's pee? And I just called, <laughs> called, but it was, it was yeah. fluid. So I had to, my dad and my mom, because my husband was still working in Shrewsbury at that time. Mm -hmm. So they drove me to the hospital and they took a, t a test because they, you can test like with a, like a dipstick. Mm -hmm. If it's um, amniotic fluid, that's what they did. And it was positive. And she took some ultrasounds as well. And it showed that the um, fluid had gone down. Mm. And so I was am admitted for two weeks after that. Subhanallah. So they, what they did, like there's a series of things you have to do because the premature labor will happen, could happen any time at that time. Yeah. So you could go into labor within 24 hours, basically. Yeah. But luckily it didn't happen. Uh, everything was fine. Um, and uh, they gave me like steroid shots because you're supposed to... Uh, give that whenever like there is risk of premature labor mm -hmm. to basically mature the lungs yeah because they're not ready to it's they're not ready yeah because they can collapse basically oh, no. um and i was giving prophylactic antibiotics yeah wow. iv um for a few days i don't remember the exact course but and then I was sent home basically, and they said that I could come like twice a week. So I was now outpatient, went from inpatient to outpatient. So they said I could come twice a week to check that everything's fine. Yeah. But on the first um, first checkup after I like gone home and then come back to the hospital, they said that uh, now I told I told her I don't feel good. I feel yeah. I can feel my heart beating like yeah. this is not normal, yeah. and because uh, like I, I'm quite active my my blood pressure and pulse is not that high yeah but and the fact that i could feel it it was like very concerning so mm -hmm. she checked and it was 120 and it's supposed to be between like 60 and 100 my pulse wow. uh, my pr blood pressure was normal um mm -hmm. so and then they did some blood tests and they showed that i had infection actually because uh, when the membranes rupture, there's a risk of like there's a risk of infection. Yeah. Inside. Even yeah. though like you're careful, it can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's what happened. I had an infection, and that's like the reason why they had to start the, or not the start, but to uh, to to do a C-section oh. because they were like we can't we can't induce you. The baby's too small, and you are not going into yeah. um, natural. Labor, yeah. yeah, by yourself. You know, in those cases, yeah. C-section is the best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Form. Like, but the thing is, I don't want to distress the baby. Yeah, yeah. I was reading a lot of stories at mm -hmm. that time but because that helps me to like know what 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 are the s different scenarios that can happen, and a lot of a lot of people went into na uh, like um, natural labor. Oh, really? And it sounded better for some reason and oh. i didn't want to go through c-section to be honest it was the oh. first time i was like no yeah but that's how it ended and i not, when i look at it now it's like it's fine as long as she was healthy yeah. mm. i have yeah. a question mm. you know like the nhs mm. compared to like hospitals in norway mm. like is there a huge difference <laughs> probably so the thing is i haven't i haven't really encountered nhs that much mm. okay. i just went for one or two antenatal uh, appointments just to like check that everything is good what i liked here in nhs actually is that you get an extra ultrasound at week uh, 12 yeah you don't mm -hmm. get that in norway oh, no way but i think they are starting it up now oh, okay so it might change in a few years <laughs> mm. um, but that's really good because then you can catch if anything is wrong that's true because i've had a miscarriage before i had this one and that miscarriage went on for like 16 weeks, even though the fetus had passed away at week eight. Oh. And, and, that's, and if they had checked, 
like a week 12 they would have known that they would have something known. is wrong yeah but i went on for like 16 weeks oh, no. uh, and we went actually in to check the gender of the baby and they told us the like there is no baby they, oh my uh, days so that was kind of uh crazy um so i had to, that that happened in uk actually so i'm um, i flo- flew back to uh norway and that's uh, where I had my, like, they had to re- start the miscarriage because it wasn't happening by itself. So, yeah, that was crazy. I'm so sorry that you went through okay. that. Yeah, I was feel that, like I have processed that, that before your first child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was okay. before. So okay. I have been, like, pregnant two times to be, oh. like, accurate. The first time, the it, it was hard when it happened, but I feel mm. like I have, I went to therapy after that. Um It was once or twice, but it was nice to just talk about it yeah. Yeah. with someone. Yeah. It's so really important. It, yeah. It was, so I'm glad I did that. So now I feel like I can speak about it without feeling like emotional. That's good. Because it's you have like to have an outlet yeah, yeah, yeah. to talk about exactly. it. Exactly. And a part of me t- thinks about this thing a bit medically mm-hmm. uh, and less emotionally sometimes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is uh, actually also good. I feel like it's kind of a protective mechanism. Maybe it's yeah. a coping yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so before you got married, how was your life like in Norway? Did you come from a big family? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, if you go back to when I was born, we lived actually in a joint family. Yeah. My dad has like seven, six brothers. If I can't, uh, wow. yeah, I can't be bothered to count right now. But there, we are, there are a lot of brothers. You must have a lot of cousins. In yeah, it. I do. <laughs> uh, and uh, the thing is the apartment we live in now is like a three and a half bedroom. Mm-hmm. Like one non-functioning bedroom because it doesn't have a window. Yeah. Um. And there were four families with kids living in there. Oh wow. And now my like my family, uh, li- still lives there, but like just my family, minus me and my sister. Wow. Yeah. So we that's how we grew up until we were around. I think once we like the family started having more kids, mm-hmm. uh, a few of the families moved out, mm-hmm. and then we were two families left. Uh, and when we, uh, I think, became teenager, that's when they also moved out. Wow. Yeah, so it was a bit crazy. But it's like a village, isn't it? It like, is, but the thing is, our experience wasn't that good, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe our ch- the kids' experience was good because we yeah. had cousins, right? Had I, grew, I feel I didn't grew, grow up as a oldest child because I had an older cousin. Mm-hmm. Nice. And she lives in Birmingham, actually. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, uh, but my mom's experience wasn't that good mm, because of the like, yeah, lack of privacy, lack yeah, of space. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. It's, it's difficult opportunities. As an adult. And, yeah. yeah, it's so, very difficult as an adult. Also, you you maybe you might have five kids, but then imagine there being twenty kids. Like it's a little bit overwhelming. It's crazy. No, it's a parents. lot. Like yeah, as as a, a child, you might find it fun this to be with so your cousins. Great. But to be the parent in that house, to be yeah, the mum in that you. house. <laughs> and setting boundaries. Yeah. Like yeah. Also, it's difficult to parent things. other people's children. Yeah. Like your own kids, you can be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then other people's kids, you're like, oh, auntie, no, yeah, don't yeah. do that. You know? yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. So the memories are like, I feel like they're mixed. Uh, but then, yeah, so fast forward, I studied medicine. But during uh, medical school, I struggled a lot mentally. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were uh, several times that I was like, I'm not made up for uh, this. Mm. Like, uh, the imposter syndrome, basically. Imposter syndrome, yeah. Plus, I didn't have any friends at, uh, at uni. I struggled oh. a lot. Did you go uni in Norway? Yeah, oh, I nice. did. Uh, it's free over there, isn't it? It is. Well, oh, listen, my. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay, the- we pay like... 50 pounds per semester. 50 but that's nothing. Pounds. That's just I like, love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love Norway so much. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I, I need to move there. Sometimes, I swear to God. sometimes, you know, when you hear about other people's experiences in different countries, yeah. you're thinking, why am I here? Yeah. United you know Kingdom, I mean? student finance. Why was I born here? Yeah. Anyways, carry on. I love Oslo. But yeah, yeah. carry on. Yeah, this is a re- a really nice. I miss it more now than I used to before. Before it was like, oh my God, it's a boring city. Nothing's happening here. But now when I go back, it's like, it's peace. You know, Oslo is my happy place. Really? Is it, yeah. is it that good? My my aunt lives in Poshgrun and uh-huh. it's actually like going there and going to Oslo is my happy place. Is it good? You know, you know how obviously I have ADHD yeah. and I'm like blah, 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 all the time. Yeah. When I go there, I'm like quiet and calm. Really? I find myself just at peace. I don't know what it is about Norway. Norway is actually my happy place. Is it quiet? It's so nice. London and is very busy, you know, isn't like, it? It's so like, green and there's like water and like in oh, where my aunt lives, yeah. there's like a, there's like a, the nearby city, Sheehan. Like they, we go there and then like there's like 
open water and there's like little lakes and it's just so cute. Oh. Yeah. And I, I now I know my way around Oslo. So yeah. I get off at Garden Run and I jump on the train <laughs> to Oslo S and then I get on the turbine all the way wherever I need to go. Right. I'm like my way around, I swear yeah, to God. You are. <laughs> I literally know my way around. I love no I love yeah. my way. Oh yeah, but agree, and that's what I miss. Especially when oh. whenever I'm in London, I'm like, it's nice. We have the nice parks and stuff, but it's too crowded. Oh. It, like it's just coming here, it was like, yeah, wow, Busy, too many you know? people. You wouldn't think there's all this traffic on a Sunday. Yeah, and it was like you know? twelve a.m. Yeah, yeah. I pee. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm mixing up that. It's ridiculous. I think because yeah. the sun's out, people are out. Sun's out, buns out. When the weather is nice, <laughs> the traffic is bad yeah, it's imagine. bad yeah. yeah what was it but, like moving though all the way to a new country yeah so let's get into it you yeah. got married and had to move like away from what you know yeah so you know? i did that in bits and parts because i was still studying when i got married mm. i got married in 2020 covid we had a, a at home wedding oh. yeah uh, my husband's uh, family couldn't attend because of uh, uh, the lockdown yeah the lockdown mm. restrictions so my husband came alone he had to stay at a hotel for like 10 days mm -hmm. and then he could come. And then we had our nikah and everything. But so I did it in bits of Bob. I, like I used to um, visit and then I came back for my exams and stuff. And then I went like it was back and forth, basically. Uh, when I eventually did move, it was when um, with Isa, um, my daughter. Sorry, I forgot to mention her That's name. a beautiful yeah, name. Isa. <laughs> yeah, Isa. Yeah. yeah. Um, when she was six months old and then I moved straight to Shrewsbury mm -hmm. wow yeah and that was a hit because I n like when I was in Norway I had my mom I uh, had my sister even my dad was like involved mm -hmm. in yeah. uh, looking after the baby uh, and now I had no one not like not even my in-laws because they were here in London so it was just like so mind numbing and also like I felt like I didn't have enough time to do anything yeah. And I love cooking, so I, for me, cooking is therapy. So I, I prefer like cooking every other day. Yeah. But even that, just started feeling like I don't want to do it anymore. So, oh. and there were days I was like, I forgot, like I kept forgetting which, which uh, what day it was. Mm. I'm like, is it Wednesday? Is it Thursday? I like, know, bro. Oh, you know when, yeah. Yeah. you know when everything seems like it's like yeah. merging mm -hmm. into one long day. One. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's, it's not a week. Yeah. It's just one long day. Yeah. So we even time. Like sometimes I'd find myself calling people, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, let me say hello to that person. It's like four o'clock in the morning, yeah. and then they're like, why are you calling me so early? What happened? What happened? What happened? Oh. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize the time. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't realize the time. Yeah. For me, it was just one long, just one long thing. Yeah. yeah. There was no time. There was no dates. There was no nothing. Yeah, because each day felt like the same at yeah, some point. Because yeah, yeah. you're doing and the same thing. It was March, thing. so the weather was really bad. Oh. It was cold, and uh, with a six months old, you can't do much outside yeah. except go on a walk. Aww. So, but but I feel like I just did, and I kept asking my sisters to come and visit me. Aww. So the youngest one came. Yeah. Uh, she's eighteen years old. Yeah. So she came, and then my mom came once, and then we used to uh, go to back to London, like back and forth, mm -hmm. every once or twice a month because of could be due to Eid or just some family function or anything yeah. but that after all after a while it was too tiring it's yeah. exhausting yeah three hours no it's exhausting because yeah. even my daughter she does it every couple of weeks she goes to Birmingham and when she comes back she's so tired it's, and you're just sitting there for two hours yeah. just driving but yeah. it's so exhausting it is it takes a toll on you after a while yeah so now I'm, uh, the thing is now she she's you slowly getting used to traveling mm. but before she would cry the entire ride and you have mm. to just take out you like youtube and put on something yeah, yeah, yeah. but and then you start feeling guilty like i shouldn't <laughs> but yeah so you got listen you're a mum. yeah you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> exactly this is what i'd be screaming to people don't feel guilty you really gotta do what you gotta yeah, do no, <laughs> if you gotta give them that phone for two hours that's Bruh. okay yeah. give it to them then give they'll live them, <laughs> give it to me, them i yeah. don't care me like, i don't care as well you know there yeah. are times where i need to cook something mm. and i'm like jenna blippy you wanna watch yeah, blippy yeah yeah Let's go watch Blippi. <laughs> <laughs> Blippi is so funny. And she's really obsessed with Octonauts as well. Oh my God, Netflix. Anna loves Octonauts. Octonauts, she loves no, it. No, but have you noticed that Blippi is two different guys? 
It, no, we li- we watched the new guy now, the younger one. Oh, the younger one. Yeah. Okay, because the there's two one, of them. The old one sold it to Disney. She looks at him sometimes like this, and she's like, "You don't look the same as the last episode." <laughs> she looks at him like Blippi. Yeah, the one on Netflix is the new guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's obsessed with Blippi, so no, she, don't feel at least bad. it gives her something to do while I cook. I can't mm, be asked. Yeah. Now she watches uh, don't feel bad. Miss Rachel. Yeah, Miss oh, Rachel's good yeah. as well. How old is she now? She is 21 months, so she's turning two oh. in September. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. How have you been finding now? The from six months till now, things are getting better. To yeah. be honest, oh. they are getting better in terms of like I feel like I can do more stuff with her. So now we go we like three or four times a week. I take her to soft play. I like have a routine basically. Before yeah. it, like having a routine was quite difficult because uh, we've been struggling with sleep since I day one <laughs> basically uh, but now it's getting better and I'm looking forward to doing stuff with her actually Aww. I take her to the park uh, we have a park nearby here in London um, she runs after the dogs but that's fine <laughs> soon maybe it might change because mine she had no fear of, of dogs yeah. for like from zero until well from I'd say one until like two and a half yeah. She was just the, the biggest dog. She does this at their yeah, face. Yeah. But now she's like, ooh, 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 yeah. ooh dogs, big one, no. <laughs> Don't touch me. Ah. Mm-hmm. And for she her, it's it, like she'll a teddy develop bear. it. Yeah, for her, yeah. it's like a teddy bear that's mm-hmm. moving. Yeah. She loves teddies. She can just grab one and just walks around. <laughs> um, so that's what it is. But she loves it too. And now she's sleeping better because she's running around. That's yeah. So that's like a win win for us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so she fell asleep around between eight and nine. And I was like, yes. But, uh, but when now when she's sli- uh, sleeping early, I'm like, okay, what do I do with my time? Yeah. So I started studying again because I have to um, uh, study for OET, which is like a medical uh, English exam cool. for when I start working again. Wow. So I'm planning on starting next year, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Inshallah. Inshallah. So let's see how That's that goes. That's so beautiful, honestly. Yeah. You know, I, I can totally relate to like not having any help. Mm. So when I when I was in London when Hannah was small, um, my mum was there, my cousins were there, my auntie was there. Like you, I could go to the family house and everybody would. Bo- can I hold her? Can I hold her? Can I play with her? Can I do this? Can I feed her? Can I do? Can I, can yeah. I put her to sleep? Like you feel like you can just like sort of like kick back a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, exactly. just lean back and relax. But mm. when I was at, in Birmingham by myself with my my ex husband at the time, um, my husband at the time now my ex-husband yeah. um when i was uh with him mm. it was just me and her locked down no one else just me and her 24 hours like ramadan was a struggle like sleep was a struggle everything was a struggle i just find myself passing out at eight o'clock or seven o'clock when i'm putting her to sleep mm. and then i wake up the next day and i'm still tired like it just felt like i don't know in the in the moment you kind of feel like it's never going to get better and it's never yeah, going to change true, true. Yeah. but with time, everything gets better. With everything time, changes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, things ease up, or you get more resilient, and yeah. things ease up. Yeah. Like, at the, when I was there at the time, I felt like I don't know. It kind of makes you feel resentful as well, isn't it? Exactly. Because yeah. then you're like, "Is this my life now?" Yeah. And then you're like, "I went through all of that for this." Mm-hmm. Or not? Obviously, not like like for this, as in um being a mum but for this as in i'm this tired i'm this sad i'm this miserable i'm this lonely like you know all of those negative emotions that you're feeling and each of them are so heightened Mm. and you're just feeling so by yourself it's just like you kind of feel like oh i could go push i go back to my previous life you know yeah i definitely grieved yeah i fully i had so many of those moments where i was like oh my god i don't know if i can do this i don't know if i'm cut out for motherhood exactly so many of those moments. i still say that (laughs) to to this day sometimes i have days where i'm like is this for me this is long (laughs) (laughs) you know sometimes my mom was saying the other day she was like guys i've officially graduated from motherhood and and we were like what does that even mean and she was like my youngest is in uni now like i'm done like my brother like they're empty nesters now. It's just my mom and dad at home. So she was like, guys, I'm done. And she looked at me and she goes, sweet, you just started. You've got like 20 years. I said, ah, <laughs> like this is crazy. When you actually think about it, That's for the so next true. 18 or 20, 21 years when they graduate, it's, you, you've got to you've raise this child. When she said that. Yeah, it, but why would she say that? <laughs> it put things in perspective. I was like, like, I've got 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 16 years if I don't have any more kids. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and when you have a kid, again. it starts again. Oh. So with Adam, it's like, at least with Jenna, I had three years. But with Adam, it's like, he will be following 
behind her, you know, in school, which is not bad. It's, the gap is not that bad. The gap but, is so okay. That's yeah, good. but yeah. I was like, you know, by the time Jenna graduates, I'm going to be in my 50s. <laughs> We're going to be old. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I want to be this young when she graduates. I don't want to exactly. be 50 when she graduates. Do you and know then what you'd I mean? have to have her when you were what? Three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. no, honestly, though, like, I actually commend you because even with support from family, I was going through it. Mm. Like, even with the support, even with my mum 20 minutes down the road, I still felt alone at times. So I can't wow. even imagine wow. moving from a different country and then not even coming to London, but you're going to like a remote yeah, area. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Shrewsbury. I mean, yeah. this doesn't sound very fun over there. No, it's oh. not. And it's it's quite, it's not diverse at oh. all. I can tell. You might see like a brown person here and there and you stare at each other, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And that's it. But, and the thing is that even, like, even when it became a bit mind numbing after a while, like you have watched all the Netflix, you have like done everything you can do basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like, I can't, I can't go anywhere. Like I have to just go through this. Had it been like, my, if my parents were like close by, it could be just be like, okay, today I'm going to their place. Yeah. And that's what my sister does because she, she had a baby actually, um, like same time as me, mm-hmm. technically. Uh, her son was born uh, on the due date that my daughter was gonna be born at. So they're quite like they're the same age yeah. basically, uh, and she lives like forty minutes drive from uh, my parents' place in mm-hmm. Norway. Wow. Uh, so seeing that she can do that, uh, like yeah. it's th- that's really good. Like, um, but I wish I could have that yeah. as well. Um, I was gonna say you're quite lucky though. Norway is only two hours away. Exactly, that's like, the thing. So whenever so I'm like, okay, worse. this is too much now. Like it's been too long. Uh, I need to go, and I then I'm like, I, t- I tell my husband, I'm like, uh, I feel like I should go now. Yeah, yeah. Um. Especially because now I'm not working, I can go. Oh. Like I'm mm. not no such restrictions, and I have been actually quite often. That's so nice. every time like people ask my husband, "Where is your wife?" She's like, he's like, he's back. She's back in Norway. Yeah, <laughs> that's not bad. I guess yeah. I love that because yeah. legitimately you can get. A, I paid the cheapest flight I exactly. ever paid to go to Norway was ten pounds. Yeah. Ten yeah, pounds? Pa- you're joking. I swear to God, that's well, crazy. Why? I paid ten pounds. I paid twenty pounds return. Yeah, Ryanair. I went to, and you know what? I didn't buy no no luggage, so it was yeah. just my rucksack. But I didn't need luggage. I was going for like three, four days, so I I put my I packed my rucksack really fat, like to the yeah. point where I was fighting it. And then I paid ten pounds there, ten pounds back, and um, I may have added six pounds for fast track. Mm. So it was probably twelve pounds, thirty two pounds return. That's amazing. Mm. And I was there for like five days. Bad. So that's one like positive thing about being that close because had it been like Canada or America or Australia it was like no yeah oh, yeah, listen. Oh, that's <laughs> written off Canada I went three it's going to be my third year this year I'm yeah. going to Canada this year yeah you don't even want to know how much we paid yeah, for me Hassan crazy. and the two kids it's like over 2,000 pounds yeah exactly yeah it's ridiculous just for the flights just just for the flights not even hotel no, we don't stay at hotels. We've got bare family there. We ain't stayed in no hotel. Oh, no, that's, that's fine. Alhamdulillah, because that's the same as me with Norway. You know yeah. What? Yeah. Norway yeah. is expensive. Oh, my days. This <gasps> time when I went, I felt like I came back with nothing in my did, back. It, oh. Did it get worse? Yeah. It, it's like everything is like five crumbs <laughs> more. I feel like after expensive. COVID, the inflation was yeah. crazy, innit? Yeah, especially if you're mm. eating out. No. That's like it's, uh, your money Norway gone. is crazy. Yeah. I think Oslo was it's, one... The most expensive city in it the world. It is. It is. Is Norway diverse? No. Yeah. Oslo is. is Oslo. 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 The rest yeah. of it is not. Yeah. The rest of it is not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. No. So that's like, the one. Like positive. Whenever I'm there and I see like how much everything costs, I'm like, okay, I'm going back to <laughs> UK. It will be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one like um, things that motivates me to come back oh. is that it doesn't cost that much it's and you so can expensive. do stuff. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. I remember when I went there, I'm lucky I'd have to pay for any accommodation as well. I just go to my family house. Um, but going out, doing things, when my cousins are like, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll pay for it. I'm like, mm. <laughs> I ain't going to say no. Because <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's over there, obviously, we're boycotting, we're boycotting. Yeah, we yeah. don't eat McDonald's. Back then. But back then, <laughs> yeah, a couple of years ago, before we were boycotting, um, <laughs> you have to make that disclaimer. I have to, I have because... to do a disclaimer because I'm not endorsing them in any way, shape, or form. We don't go there. Oopsie. 
We don't go there. <laughs> yes, X. Um, I, here, you can get like a Big Mac. Oh, no, not a Big Mac, but like you can get like a flirt of fish or uh, I eat halal food. <laughs> I didn't always eat halal food, but I eat halal food now, okay? Um, let's say let's just say a Big Mac, okay? You get a Big Mac meal for like, what? <laughs> eight quid? Yeah. Seven, eight quid? Yeah. Over there, their Big Mac meal's like fifteen pounds. You're joking. I swear to God. Just for McDonald's. Listen, That's I went crazy. to McDonald's and I we ordered a fillet of fish and it was first of all, the fillet of fish is different over there. It's not the same as ours. It tastes different, it looks different, it's weird. Um and for four of us, they spent like fifty quid. For more, McDonald's. more than fifty quid. That's it was like I think it was like how many Because I think ten kroners is like a pound, isn't it? Twelve now. Twelve now. Yeah. Okay. So twelve kroners is a pound. I think they paid like I can't even tell you how many kroners. Maybe twelve like kroners, kroners yeah. is one pound. Yeah, yeah. That's but nothing is twelve kroners. Everything yeah, is yeah. more than twelve <laughs> kroners. Exactly, that's what I mean. But like, if you compare it to the pound, wow, raw. It's mad. It's really, and it's so expensive. You can go there. You, tr- you, tr- you change your money. Well, like your money's gone in five minutes. Yeah, of mm. course. If you go to the airport and they have all these like little things in the airport, and they're like, oh, three for fifty kroners. You don't deep. How much is fifty kroners? Fifty kroners is like take twelve. Listen, the quick maths is I not don't, maths. I can't yeah. I'm tired. My brain is not probably. working. I didn't know Norway was that lit. I love Norway. Have you been? Have you seen the Northern Lights? No, I haven't. Did you yeah. live in Norway? We didn't, tra- we didn't travel that much. Oh. <laughs> I w- now I regret it. I was like, yeah. I should have when I could. Yeah. Uh, but but we're gonna do it one day, inshallah. Inshallah. With Isa. There was Northern Lights in the UK recently. I know, that was weird. It was Where? like, did you not see it? It was, it was trending all over the everywhere. Place. There was Northern Lights in like North London or some shit that happened a few weeks ago, yeah, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were tweeting about it. it was I all completely over missed Instagram. it. Sorry, I don't have any internet. Oh. I completely missed it. Yeah. How did you miss that? I totally missed it. No, there was legit Northern Lights. When people take pictures, I was like, this can't be the UK. Like, yeah. this can't be London. It's crazy. I think it happened somewhere north. I want to go and see them, like the proper green yeah. northern lights. Yeah. Same. Like Tromso. Yeah. Very, yeah. very, very cold and yeah. very far. So, yeah, you're, how long do you think, because obviously the is- isolation, it must have affected your mental health. Mm. How did you change your day-to-day routine to make to make your day a little better? Because so, I wouldn't know what to do if I was in a little city where... First of all, it's not even that diverse. So I would not even leave the house. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if I was like a minority in an area, I'd stay in my house because I'd feel yeah. a bit uh, mm-hmm. out of place. Because trust me, I've been I've been to towns and villages where it's just w- w- white people everywhere. They and look I like felt, that is- And I felt, yeah, I felt a bit out of place. So, so if I were you, I, I would have just... Yeah. <laughs> I would have been taking flights to Norway every weekend. Yeah. I can't lie. Like, I don't know how I would handle that. And then on top of that, you've got the postpartum and you've got sleep deprivation. Mm. It's the constant, like, um, oh. looking after the child. Like, they're very demanding when they're young age. No breaks. There's no breaks. There's uh, no breaks. Yeah. How did you cope with that? So the thing is, I'm 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 very introvert. Yeah. And I'm socially awkward. Yeah. So when I think back at it, I'm like, I could have done so much. Like, I feel like I still didn't do enough. Mm-hmm. Because if you, if you look at it from, like, a textbook perspective like this is what you can do to feel less isolated there's so many things you can do mm-hmm. like you should go out meet other moms like join peanut or whatever like mm-hmm. i tried uh but didn't feel like i didn't like it was a te- like um it wasn't motivating me in any way mm-hmm. so uh, i still i'm like yeah i was too like complacent i just accepted it how it was mm-hmm. and actually affected our like um, marriage as well mm-hmm. so yeah, my, yeah yeah so yeah. My, uh, me and my husband would I feel like uh, fight over small matters that actually mm. is not that even that big of a deal but we would um, because he's working like crazy hours 12 hour shifts and stuff and I'm at home meeting nobody because that's what one thing I used to tell him is like you're talking to adults at work and I'm here uh, you're the only person I meet and yeah. if you come home with a bad mood, it's gonna affect me, right? Yeah. So that that's that's one of the things that was really challenging. Oh. Um, other than that, uh, I was like, okay, what do I like to do, right? What, how can I lift myself up? Because I have been like down before. Yeah. So I kind of uh, learned how to deal with it. Yeah. And before I came to, I forgot to mention that before before I came to UK, 
uh, with Isa, I actually went to therapy mm-hmm. uh, for that like two, three months. Mm-hmm. Um, it was free, uh, luckily, because it's too expensive otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the main thing I spoke to her about is the fact that I was going to move with a baby to a new country mm-hmm. and having to deal with new people, like uh, people who are family or uh, people who want wants to get involved in the baby's life. But yeah. I just didn't feel... Or I, I just want to learn to set boundaries, yeah. basically, because I didn't I didn't want to feel resentful afterwards and mm-hmm. just feel angry all the time because I can't say no. Yeah. Uh, and but luckily, because we lived in Shrewsbury, the boundary setting wasn't that much of a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I did was take up things I used to like and running was one of them. Mm-hmm. And I already started running uh, postpartum when I was in Norway. So I was like, this is one thing I'm going to continue with mm-hmm. and I'm going to sign up for races. I'm going to look forward to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. That's what I did. So I did my first 10K race in April that year, was it? I'm, I'm mixing up all the years, but yeah, yeah. I did. That's okay. Yeah, and I was the only brown person there. Wow. So it was kind of, I was like, oh, I wish there were other like oh. people who look like me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's one thing that I feel like is very common in the running community, especially if you don't live in a diverse area. Yeah. But uh, here in London, it's different. You have so many uh, diverse run clubs. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually a part of one called She Runs. I haven't been able to like go to their track because it, I think they are up north I think I'm, I'm not sure mm-hmm. but but inshallah when uh, Isa is more independent yeah. whenever that will happen I will try to uh, participate uh, but that's one thing that l- I look forward to that's yeah. like my I'm uh, planning my runs every week I'm planning yeah. like how I will get better and I'm seeing improvement and that's the best part of it yeah. so that's, that's what keeps so me excited yeah no I love that for you I love that for you um, yeah no I love it that I don't think I happy. could ever. I don't think I could ever run. I get. I don't I have social I don't anxiety. Run for the bus. Yeah, yeah I, I, I want people to, to look at me running. Yeah, I, I did too. First no, time I, I started running. <laughs> <laughs> legs don't deceive me, because I start running weird. Because people me? are watching me. <laughs> it's like Phoebe from uh, yeah. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> Phoebe from Friends. Yes. Yeah. yeah, literally, that was in my head, and then you said it. Yeah. I love that. That's so funny. No, yeah. I had the same uh, thoughts when I uh, started running. It was back in uh, during COVID times. Yeah. Like gyms were closed, and I need to run. Mm-hmm. I, I have been running for a long time, but I used wow. to run on the treadmill. But that was fun after I started running outside. Now it's like, it's boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, runner's s- high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After 40 minutes, yeah. that's when it kicks in. The runner's high is nice. Yeah. Really? I heard, it's yes. the best thing ever. I feel nice. like that's what I'm chasing every time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How, is it really that enjoyable? Yeah, it is. You feel when like you're tell top me, of the world. Wow. Really? Yeah. I can't find any form of exercise that's enjoyable. No, I'm not going to lie to you. Apart from I, swimming. I, I like felt, swimming. I felt yeah. that there's like a, there's also sort of like a similar running high in swimming. Yeah. I can and imagine. Well, like once cardio. you go back yeah, and yeah, forth, yeah. back and forth, and I used to swim a lot. Yeah. I used to get that like swimming high. Yeah. And you I feel just powerful. keep going yeah. back. You feel so, you feel like, like if a bullet hit me right now, it would just go doof. Yeah. <laughs> like that. It would, it would deflect off me. Really? I swear to God. <laughs> You feel That's powerful. That's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. I wish I could feel that way when it comes to exercising. And you know, exercising is the one thing that can really like, mm-hmm. for, you know, for your mental, a lot of people say when they're depressed, they, yes. they hit the gym. Yeah. And the yeah. gym usually helps. It brings, Serotonin, exercise brings out the oxytocin, all of the those oxytocin good. And, it, and it really helps yeah. your mood as well. Yeah, it does. Um, and and I, I still refuse that to exercise. Firsthand. Many oh. times. So every time like I have been on a low, I'm trying to pick myself up. Running has been the number one like go to solution for me. Mm-hmm. You know uh, the mental resilience it takes to go in a hole and then take yourself out of this yeah. hole. It's and mad. then go in the hole again and then take yourself out of the hole again. Like it's honestly Allah Mubarak. I commend you. I think I'm I've that's I'm in awe, Wallahi. Because that's so beautiful. A lot of people end up in this hole and then they just go I don't know what to do with myself. I mean, I mean, being there, done that yeah, as well. Yeah, <laughs> of course. But, you know, getting to the point where you're like, okay, that's enough is enough, you yeah. know, and picking yourself up yeah. and knowing that life can throw you into that hole Trust at any time. Me, it's hard, yeah. Picking yourself up is so important. That's why therapy is a very good thing to do, like you mentioned. Yeah. Find an activity, find something for you to do, go Exercising. somewhere, do something, yeah. exercise. Like, just... 
don't wallow and sit in your house and just feel sorry for yourself because you'll prolong the amount of time you're staying in this hole. Mm. Do it until you've had enough and then that's it. Mm. Pick yourself up. Everything always changes. And I can, I, can, I can honestly speak firsthand because I was the same as you. I was in a hole. I was isolated. I was in a city that I didn't know. Obviously, I, di- I didn't get on a plane to get there. Yeah. But Birmingham, you might as well get on a plane to get there. Mm-hmm. It takes bloody long to get there. Um, no, well, I, it was so difficult being in a position where you're, none of your friends are there. None of your family's there. Mm-hmm. Like, friends, yeah, like, I, I knew people, but, like, not friends as in people I've been with for years, you know? Mm. Like my immediate friendship group, people that I can call at any moment and be like, hey, I'm stuck, or hey, can you? Like, I-, I need to talk to you, yeah. you know? Like, it, it felt, it was worse than alone. I don't think loneliness is the correct word to describe it. Mm. I think isolated and it almost, you could have locked me in a room, nobody yeah. would have noticed. You could have yeah. just locked the door and said, you can't go anywhere. And that's literally how it felt. Yeah. Sort of like prison, I guess. But I feel like you can be lonely and you can be happy at the same time yeah. sometimes. Yeah. It's the perceived notion of like feeling isolated, I think mm. is the, like, what's harmful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and another thing that I try to do like actively is to contact people. Yeah. Like to speak, like I used to call my sister, I still do, yeah. uh, video call my sister whenever whenever it's not like i talk to her about my feelings but just seeing us like a familiar face yeah. Yeah. and started talking more to my friends actually so uh, somehow i feel like how you how you say that uh distance make you grow fonder yeah. that's so true yeah. because now i'm like oh, i miss my friends i miss my family so whenever i go now back and i meet them it's just like you appreciate quality yeah, time yeah mm-hmm. but then i'm like oh i f- hope i had uh like i wish i had uh, appreciated it when i was there Right, because mm. back then it was just like school. You didn't see like, you didn't meet friends that often. Yeah. Basically you were caught up, but and now I'm like, oh, could have done so much. But yeah. it is how it is now. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, 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 still. At least you got to that point where you were like, now I'm gonna cherish this, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's and that, really uh, that's so, that's actually a very nice feeling as well. It mm. gives you kind of a high. That, yeah. that gratefulness that comes after like struggling yeah. like you can think about it and think that oh I lost so many years of my life to depression or anxiety or what not mm-hmm. but when you come out of it and you see the world in a new perspective that you hadn't seen before it's like wow I, what, how, like do people really appreciate this people who haven't experienced it of course yeah. like, when I look at people who are living life like like they don't have that, that kind of downs or depression uh, like I'm like you. You don't see what I'm seeing right yeah. now. I'm just too high, or, like about life. But mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I feel like Islam ties a lot into this as well. Yeah, it does. Because when you're completely alone, who can you talk to? Mm-hmm. There's only Allah, you know. And it's in that moment, not everybody thinks of it like that. Yeah. But when you reflect, you're like, whoa, okay. Let me have a talk to God. <laughs> there's no one else for me here to to talk to let's talk to god Mm -hmm. it's very important and you know this time around Mm. you know how i was saying like when i was pregnant i kept saying to myself this time i'm gonna mentally prepare like i don't want i don't want to feel down again stuff like that um and because i gave birth during ramadan as well Mm. i actively try to remember god like all the time the first time around i'm not gonna lie to you it could have been the depression it could have just been how i was feeling but I did not turn to Allah at all. Like, it was, yeah. You didn't consider it though. I didn't. I don't feel, because I feel like we're kind of raised to think of like the punishment of of, Eli- of like Allah and Ilahi. And it's, you think of him as somebody who's wrathful and like, you know, uh, someone who punishes. Mm-hmm. But really, Allah could actually be your friend. No, you know, of course. Like you look at him like your friend. You can, you can talk to him. And he knows exactly what you're going through. Sort of like your therapy. Exactly. And those du'as that are made in the most like pits of the hole are the ones that get answered. Exactly. Because I made my du'as for sisters and a village and sisterhood in the pits of hell. And I got you guys. Mm-hmm. So it's proof that it actually works. No, no, yeah, I know, I know. But I was so down that I didn't oh. even have the words to even make the du'a. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. 
but mm-hmm. I felt like maybe obviously God can he knows what's in your heart you, he knows, don't, you yeah. don't even need to say you it really don't. but I just I never once like made that maybe I prayed for sleep at one point maybe <laughs> one time I was like yeah Rob <laughs> I yeah. want to sleep but that <laughs> was about it like I never really <laughs> yeah went deep and had a proper connection um, yeah. and I was pushing everyone away and I also turned away from God as well. Do you know them ones? That's how that's how down bad I was Aww. this time around because I was actively just remembering God and doing my dick every day. And he's a Ramadan baby. It was just a lot more. And he's a Ramadan lot better. Baby as well. it, it actually was a lot better. Mm. Ramadan made a big difference, didn't it? Huge difference. Mm. It made a huge difference. But Aww. but yeah, and leave. Um, you moved. You're back in. You're in London now, aren't you? No, we're just visiting. Oh, yeah, we're we just came visiting. for visiting. Wow. So we're going back uh, on Wednesday. Oh. You know, you said his family are from here in London. Yeah. Like, I- imagine what it was like for also for him. Like, yeah. I, I get the... Because you know me, I never considered it, yeah. like, looking at it from the husband's perspective. <laughs> because when I moved to Birmingham, my husband was from Birmingham. Yeah. His family was five minutes away. Yeah. Like, all his friends were there. All of his course. childhood friends were there. His life didn't change. His life didn't even... You couldn't even sneeze to yeah. change his life, yeah? <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing changed for him. But for me, I felt like my whole world changed. Yeah. Now I'm exactly. a mum, I have this responsibility. It's COVID, I can't go anywhere. I'm in a new city. I don't even know my way around. I take Ubers everywhere. Yeah. I, I think I went, oh, wallahi, I think I went on the bus. I could say less than 10 times in that whole three years I lived there. Less than 10, I'd start for like, probably even less than five. Wow. <laughs> Wow. In the whole three years I lived there, yeah. I Ubered everywhere. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't get to grips with that. Mm-hmm. So I never looked at it from his perspective. But for you, obviously, he moved to Shrewsbury himself as well with you, yeah, and so, he's so in a new environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He studied in uh, Bulgaria oh, wow. medicine, wow. Uh, so he's been away from his family for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when he came back, it was of course harder for him to leave again. Yeah. Uh, I think he stayed there for like a year in London was th- when we were going back and forth mm. um, so it was but like we know that it will come to an end eventually uh, and we are like moving back to London now end of July inshallah and mm. let's see how where we will end up next yeah. like it's uh, uh, according to where we apply and all of that stuff but the thing with my husband is that I would say that he's really good at making friends. He's like, can start chatting about football or cricket and mm. like that's it. He, like he would say himself that he's an introvert, but I feel like he's he's quite like, he's social, even mm. though he's introverted. Yeah. He knows like the small talk and what to say, what not to say, how to deal with people. While me, I'm just like, how do I even start a conversation? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So oh. it's a bit harder. Or maybe guys are just more like easy going in that way. I don't and know. I think football is a universal language for them. Yeah. yeah. So he, he found a football anyone. club like instantly. Yeah. Wow. And now he's like cricket as well. Wow. I'm like, how how do you do it? <laughs> I'm struggling to just find one person to hang out with. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Do you have at the moment, because obviously I see on your Instagram, you're doing all your yeah. runs and mm-hmm. she's listening to our podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I actually I did <laughs> listen to first one I listened to when I was running 14 kilometers. Oh. So I was just la- laughing and smiling the entire oh. run. It was so oh, good. It was so nice. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. I love that for you. But I was wondering, um, like, do you have like, does, she, does your daughter, does she go to like daycare or something? No, she doesn't. Oh, okay. Do you run with the param? No, no, no. I, I only run when he's at home. Okay. okay. Someone visiting, like my sister, she was yeah. visiting. Yeah. Uh, I wait for her nap time and then I head off. But that's a, like that's been like a problem because I have to wait until he's home yeah. and I have to like every like my everything is like, of course around her uh, her routine and her yeah. schedule. And some weeks my husband is working twelve hours and I. I just can't run then. Yeah. I tried running with pram once and it was not that nice. Yeah. She was moving around. Yeah. She doesn't like sitting in a pram. Yeah. So she was uh, like twisting and turning and yeah, mm-hmm. crying. Mm-hmm. So oh. I was like, that, there's no point. Let's go home. <laughs> yeah. But I know people do it and for some people it works out. Uh, even when I'm, I was running 10K that race uh, in 2022, there were a f- few people who were running with a stroller. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see. I, I oh. wish I could do that. Maybe you could get a treadmill in your house. I don't want to. I don't want to run on treadmill. She likes to go outside. Yeah. Oh. I, I was thinking about that in winter times. Yeah, actually. it's really cold, isn't uh, it? 
Yeah, it was too cold. Uh, and I was uh, asking, my, but the thing is that running outside is something else. Once you start running outside, you can't go back. You ha- yeah. you can like if you have to like if you if you ha- don't have any choice, but you rather mm. not because for me, running has become like a alone time. Yeah. It has become like quality time. So yeah. I just look forward to just leaving the house without anything and just running. Oh. And Shrewsbury is really nice when it comes to like greenery and nature, and it's beautiful. Like it's Shropshire and farmlands, and it's just yeah amazing. So running there is is therapy. Oh, honestly that's really yeah. nice so I wouldn't want a third meal or, or else I would miss out on that oh. because it would be just easy to be like okay let me just do it today on a third meal mm-hmm. so yeah damn that that makes me want to start running I can't lie to you why does it sound like that the wind in my hair yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh Love wow it, the, the scenery the grass is like I think I just you're I selling to, it I yeah. need to get over the social anxiety that I have <laughs> yeah because I don't ever like running on a treadmill in a gym. I don't yeah. want people to see me running. I don't know why. Do I look stupid when I'm running? Am I breathing too hard? Like I'm overthinking it. Yeah. And running outside, I have this other fear where it's like, what if I drop and <laughs> fall? Yeah. And oh everyone my can see god! Me. Oh Literally. my god! And the way I'm clumsy, oh I will trip on a, on a curb or like yeah. on a piece of concrete, and that's it. You will never see me outside again after yeah, that. This, <laughs> this is why I cycle. I'm so sorry. I don't like walking anymore. I don't like running anymore. I will jump on the bike. Yeah. I I have I fell one time. Mm. Oh. It wasn't that bad. Mm. Like I I was able to catch myself, but it was on trail because trail is more uneven. I'm yeah. used to running on like pavement. Yeah. So, but otherwise, I'm like I like the amount of time I'm running. I I feel like it's coming <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where I will fall, but hopefully not. Inshallah. If you're running properly, you're focused, then you read your du'a as well. Hmm? Read your du'as. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Mm. You know, I, I, when I'm, because I've been obsessed with these line bikes lately. When I get on the line bike, um, I make sure I read the, you know, the du'a that you get on a car. Yeah. The yeah. that one. I read that one because I'm like, ain't no way I want to get hit by a car today. No way. Yeah. And I read my going outside du'as and I read all of the adkars in the morning before I get on this bike, and so far. So far, no nobody's hit me yet. Yeah, I've not yeah, fallen yeah. off it. So London roads are kind of they're kind of mad. So you have to, yeah. Do you know what I think? Yeah. I'm, I've become a menace. So mm-hmm. we are. I say to the cars, wait. <laughs> I go. I go. Yeah. I look at it. Wait. <laughs> okay. Mm. We don't I like can't the lie bike to you guys. <laughs> I can't I lie it. to you as a driver. Yeah. I'm your worst nightmare. Yeah. Even I am as a your runner, worst nightmare. even as a runner, you are our worst nightmare. Oh. Yeah, because I'm running and they are just zooming past me and i'm just like okay give me some warning like yeah. or slow down slightly yeah. i don't know <laughs> yeah no i can't stand cyclists yeah like today i wanted to i don't want to i don't want to trigger you you won't trigger me but i wanted to clip the back of his <laughs> wheel so that he could f- fall because <laughs> basically <laughs> there's a bike lane right there yeah. They made a bike lane for exactly. you. Why are you in front of my car? Exactly. Why? <laughs> I do that too. I was like, move out, like go to your bike lane. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I do that as well. Why? Sometimes I want to be a car as well. <laughs> so I know this sounds crazy, <laughs> no, 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 but no. sometimes I go in between the cars and I make them wait behind me. You know how cyclists go to the front? Why would you do that? And then they wait at the front. Why sometimes I just stay in the middle of the, in the, middle of the car. And then you could be the on the road, but be on the side. Yeah, but why should I be on the side if it's at a junction or like if if I'm afraid for my safety? You need to see me. So I st- I I go in between the cars. We have mirrors on the side. We can see you. No, I'd rather that you really did like. No, you knew I was there. You don't you don't jar me. You see but this? I swear I'm your worst. You nightmare. see this? She's admitting yeah, that yeah. she goes in the middle. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I go in the middle. No, and no. You know, sometimes I'll look at him and then I'll wait for this one to go. I'll tell him go go go, and I'll go behind him. There was one guy, he kept going quickly and then st- slowing down and then going quickly and slowing down. Yeah, try and I said intimidate. to myself, yeah. I went in front of his car and I started cycling slowly. <laughs> and it was at a road where he couldn't overtake me. So I was like, yeah. he was raging, I know. He it. was so angry because as soon as he got a chance, he went Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't lie to you. That's, that, to that, clip that was me. probably me today, I can't lie. I was like, move out the way. <laughs> um, it pisses me off because there's a light, there's a bike lane right <laughs> exactly. there. There's just just go to the bike lane you know i get the same high as you do on those bikes yeah it's cardio basically i don't know what it is but i really get like a high on the bike i need to find something that gives me a nice high uh, i don't some, have anything like, that makes me feel that way like, halal high yeah i was about to say dancing can also like 
Zumba. Uh, yeah, Zumba, basically. Yeah. You what really do I do, guys? Give me ideas. Do Zumba. Yeah, Zumba Pilates. Pilates gives me a nice little high. My sister is... Pilates bro, is a vibe. My sister always tells me to do the Pilates. She's been doing it for a few years. Her waist is snatched. Yeah, love imagine. about it. I love about it. She's like, sweet, get on it. Bro, um, can I just say, I do a lot of exercise and, and yet I get fatter. No, you're not. You're dropping the weight. I'm not dropping anyway. You are. I'm getting bigger. I can bigger. see it on you, man. No, but I feel bigger. No, you, what, how do you feel bigger? I don't know what it is. I've been doing a lot of exercise lately. You've been cycling bare. Maybe Keep my up. muscles are growing. Could be. Also, appetite grows when you exercise. I'm always hungry. Because yeah. as a runner, you, it's hard to lose weight because you're hungry all the time. Oh, oh yeah. No. Especially if you're training for like long distances. It's like crazy. <gasps> but how are all to, the runners skinny? She went hmm? to New York. You went to New York? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, she went to New York, guys, as for a marathon. I was so proud of it's you. It's a half guys. marathon. Half marathon. Way. People get like keep mixing those up, but it's half marathon is yeah. half the distance. Yeah. Uh, but it was re- really nice. I, like, 5K or 10K? 21K. <laughs> that's a half. Hey, that's not a half. <laughs> that's a half. <laughs> <laughs> that's a half. The full yeah. one is 42K. Yeah. Damn. And then you have ultras as well, which are 50K and 70K. And even 100k. Are you joking? No. <laughs> 21k. Yeah. That's that was basically two laps around Central Park. Oh, inside like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know how big Central Park is. I can Central imagine it being Park, pretty big. Damn. Central Park I think can hold like a couple of million people. No way. It's Central Have you seen the pictures? There's a building here. I always see like a And then you just see a lot park like this yeah and Central it's beautiful park. with the trees and stuff it looks beautiful yeah, well, I want to go to New York so badly how many blocks is it I'm sure it's about, probably about 70 blocks uh, I, I'm not sure but it's quite it's quite huge yeah oh my so God. one uh, like lap around is 10k wow yeah. oh wow no thank you <laughs> <laughs> no but that's but amazing you, it's though. not like you're you're not sprinting <laughs> you have to run in a like a pace that is doable Mm-hmm. And you have to find your pace because uh, this race was called a real simple women's half marathon, mm-hmm. oh. and there was only women, wow. so eight thousand women, oh. approx- wow. like plus minus. Uh, it was amazing vibes uh, because there were people from like all parts of life. Mm-hmm. There were disabled women as well oh. on wheelchairs, and then they were all women. They were like women of bi- different sizes, for instance. That yeah. was uh, like. You don't often see that. You think, like you said, that runners are like super skinny. Yeah. But that, that's mostly, I feel like, the the elite runners. Yeah. Uh, it was just, it was just good vibes, and that's people were amazing. walking in between. So it's not like you have to run the entire thing. Mm-hmm. It's about completing in like a just completing. Time. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take for me? Yeah. Uh, it, for me, it took two hours and twenty minutes. Wow. Uh, and what was the set period of time? I think it's three hours or four hours. I'm not sure. That's amazing. Yeah. So my goal was to finish in two hours and 30 minutes because this was my first ever. So I I beat that. I was like, yes. There's something about running in a race because there's so many people around you. You get excited and you're running better than you would have run on your own. You motivate each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, You're not running by yourself. That as well. People are standing on the line and cheering you up and they have their their posters and everything. and uh, so that was uh, that was amazing. I would do it again. And after that, I was like, "What's the next one?" Oh. So the next one is in September. It's in London, actually, the nice. big half. Uh, it's a uh, s- s- similar route to London Marathon, uh, but of course not the entire entire thing. That would be no, too crazy. This is. You know why this is touching me so much? Why? It's because like you used you first started out um, like the running became like a way for you to cope. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And then you grew to love it so much to the point where you're flying yeah. to New York yeah. to That's run so a half beautiful. marathon. That's yeah. just, that is it's just, so beautiful. It's just the cutest thing. It, it almost seems like you've got this like beautiful friendship with, with running. Yeah, exactly. Like you guys have this, like, do you know what I mean? Like it's become your safe space. It's yeah. become a place where you, like, ugh, I can't explain it. It's like a, I love this for you. Thank you. Me really too. Do. Thank you. And I feel like I'm gaining my confidence due to it because when I started mm. running again postpartum, well, I I could barely run three kilometers, yeah. and that's where I started. And then I met someone actually, uh, a runner, uh, um, JV Majid, who used to actually live in UK. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, then she moved back. Uh, and she, I was listening to her story actually. She started running also from 3K and she was in her, I don't, I'm not sure if she was in her late 20s or early 30s. And that's when she started running basically. Mm-hmm. And she started with uh, 3K and now she's running marathons. So I was like, if she can do it, I should be able to do. That's amazing. Like, uh, because she worked for it, right? It's not like it, it, she became a runner overnight. It takes time. Yeah. yeah. And that dedication and that time you give and the ups and downs, because every run is not a good run. You don't get the runners high every time. Some runs are like, you're like, how my legs are not moving, especially when you are closer to your uh, period. Is okay. that when your legs You're feel right. so heavy? Okay. But I have learned to accept that that's how it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Like my body is going through something right now. Yeah. That's why it's not prioritizing running. But it's okay. So next mm. time when I'm running again, I know that it won't be like that. Yeah. So yeah. Like that all the time. Yeah. So you know the run is high. Yeah. yeah. What does that feel like? Is it like you can keep running for hours and you and you won't feel tired? Like how does no, the high feel tired. like? It's more like you're just like I'm on the top of the world. Everything mm-hmm. is amazing. I can beat everyone, everything and everyone that comes in my way. Mm. And you just want to like put your arms out, out and just run. Mm. You know how you see in those with music videos? It's just like, <laughs> with like the wind in your <laughs> head. I've done that before. I've been running and just put my arms out or do, like done a twirl or something because oh. it just feels so good. Oh. Yeah. You know what it feels like, Sylvia? It feels like you get to a point, obviously not, I don't like running, so I'm not running. <laughs> but on the bike, it, you get to, you get like a, it almost feels like, you know at baby showers where they pop that thing and then all the confetti comes out? Yeah. It's like that, but just with loads of happy feelings. What am I doing with my life wrong? Because <laughs> <laughs> no, there's people, no, there's people in this <laughs> world <laughs> that have found something that they love and they get a high from it. Yeah, I need to find that for myself because each day for me is... Uh, I mean, coffee Each helps day as well. I'm like, fuck this, huh? <laughs> coffee can help as well sometimes. I like coffee a lot. I'm not a coffee yeah. person. This is, this is tea. Oh, tea okay. here. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know the other day I realised coffee is really an acquired taste? Like, you don't just start drinking coffee. Exactly, exactly. Right. You, you put loads of sugar in it and then you're like, ooh, yeah. this is a bit too sweet. Yeah. Exactly. And then you put less sugar and then you put less sugar until you put no sugar. To be fair. And I you're like, like, this tastes so good. I like no sugar. Yeah. Ice coffee hits. Mm. I'm an iced coffee kind of person. Yeah, but that has hella sugar in it. I know. See, now I can't drink that That's anymore. probably why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. now I go to baristas and I get a cup and I don't put any sugar in it. Same. And I literally, I'm like, in my mouth, I'm like... <laughs> it's bitter. It tastes so good. <laughs> it's so bitter. I swirl it around in my mouth and I'm like, wow. If I'm yeah. going to drink it without no sugar, I have to at least put milk in it. Because when it's just black coffee... Oh, no, I don't drink black coffee. No. No, oh, thank you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. With oat milk. Black coffee is mad. <sighs> More cars is what I started with. It was mm. more like chocolate and coffee. Yeah, yeah, like a mocha. Yeah, and then it wasn't enough, so I had double shot in that. Nice. Yeah. And then it was not enough. Then I was like, okay, let me try lattes. But lattes taste more like milk, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. So I went over to cappuccino. Mm-hmm. But still, I'm in a uh, single shot. So maybe I don't really while. like cappuccinos. I like really? lattes. Oh, okay. I like lattes with double shot. Yeah, that, yeah that like works I like a double too, shot latte. Delicious. Too. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. I do like a white mocha. Before boycotting Starbucks, oh, we don't go there anymore. The white mocha goes crazy. Yeah, I can't lie. No one else does it like Starbucks. But I'll still, I'll never go back. Yeah, we we can live without it. Yeah, we can live without <laughs> it, or I just might make it at home if I if I actually try. But but anyways, how are you now? Now I feel like I'm much better because one, it's summer. <laughs> yeah. And two, I just feel like I I have. Things are getting better in terms of like either sleep schedule is getting better. Um, I have plans. I like I have these runs coming up. Uh, one mm. in London, one in Oslo, and um, like basically I can see things changing. Right? Yeah. I can see that. Okay, next year I'm gonna start working. Before that, I was like I don't know what's happening. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know when I'm gonna start working. If I'm gonna be able to work at all, uh, or like what's going on basically, yeah. and. I feel like I'm just more willing to take risk and like jump into stuff. Yeah. Before, as before, I was just like, no, I can't be bothered. Yeah. So that's what I feel like is changing. So I'm looking. I I know that like in one week I may feel another low, right? Of like course. How life is. Yeah. But at least I know that like it's not gonna last forever. It's like those tough runs. You know that they're coming, but they're not gonna last uh, last forever. Mm-hmm. You'll have a nice run eventually. 
or you will have yeah. a nice like and that's life moment. as well so yeah, you'll exactly. have bad days yeah but there will also there will also be good days yeah but yeah. i'm just more willing to like make plans with my friends because mm-hmm. i know my friend is coming to london in a few months so we're gonna plan something then yeah. and i'm gonna be traveling to oslo back in september as well so yeah that's how it's gonna be plus you have to work on your marriage that's one thing yeah. i feel like it's once so like important. things are stable there mm. like you feel like you can go through a lot together yeah. no matter like how tough it gets yeah 100%. but when you when everything is like unstable even like the best situation or even if you have your family there like everything's gonna feel like yeah it's that's, that's not working very out. true yeah 100 percent. true you know i realized that yesterday yesterday I had a really tough day and my toddler she's with my mother-in-law for mm. the weekend so it wasn't her but i had my newborn well he's not no- newborn now he's Is over, he still a newborn? he's over three months i still <laughs> say newborn he's past three months now but my goodness he's very clingy yeah. right so yesterday i had a plan to like I was literally doing DIY around the house. Hassan literally had training all day from morning until like 7.30 p.m. So he wasn't at home. But I couldn't get anything done. Because you know when you're in your zone and you're like, I have to do this, 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 this around the house. And I was like cleaning and decluttering. I was in my zone. But I had to keep stopping every five minutes because he could not stop crying. Every time I put him down, he doesn't want to sleep. He doesn't want the milk. He wants me to hold him a certain way and just rock him. That's what he likes. So every five minutes I would stop what I'm doing, go to him and it, it became so frustrating that but by the time Hassan came home, the house is a mess because I didn't finish the cleaning I was supposed to do. Mm. He's also, my husband's also, he's coming back stressed and tired and he had a long day of training. So he already came back feeling a bit like deflated. Yeah. And then I'm also deflated. So when he walked into the room and he saw me, you know, giving Adam milk, he can just, you know, with me, you can just see it. You don't even need to ask, how are you? You will see it on my face, my body language. You will know that I'm not in a good mood. So yeah. when he, as soon as he walked in, he looked at me, he goes. And I was like, <laughs> he knows not to. Exactly. I, I saw him and I was like, you've had a long day. He Aww. saw me and he's like, you've had a long day. And instead of getting onto each other, it's better to just talk about your day. So he'd be like, yeah. how was your day? And I, and I told him everything I vented. I said, take your son. <laughs> Maybe you should have a sh- go have a shower first. Yeah. Um, go have a shower, unwind, eat something. But I was like, he's all yours because I need to finish what I, sp- I started. Like 10 hours ago. And then yeah. he started venting about his day. And I realized that he was sitting from nine o'clock till 7.30. He was doing training. So he had a long ass day yeah. as well. So sometimes we forget that. Yeah. Sometimes we forget that they also had a long day exactly. at work. Aww. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's mental exhaustion. I feel like there's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. We forget how tired you get when you're mentally exhausted. Mm-hmm. When you're physically exhausted, obviously you know that you can sleep it off and you wake up tomorrow and you feel better. Like you know when you do lots of exercise mm. or when you're running and you get muscle pains. Yeah. yeah. And you're physically like, oh, I don't want to get off this chair. You know that tomorrow you're gonna feel better. Exactly. But mental exhaustion, it can take weeks to get back to normal. Yeah. Mental exhaustion is so. Wow, it's overwhelming. Yeah. And to do training on the weekend when you should be off is another... You know what the main thing is? I feel like the reason why the the divorce rate right now is so high is because people are not thinking we're a team. We need to be here for each other. People are thinking, why doesn't she get what I'm going through? And the other person is saying, why doesn't he get what I'm going through? When really you're both going through something. Exactly. Just find a common ground, bloody hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I can say that because I'm speaking from experience. No, honestly, and I think it's very important to just listen to each other. True, Let true. that person uh-huh. just tell you what they're going through, and just listen. Don't, like, don't listen to respond. Yeah. Listen to understand, like, and deep what they're saying. You're a team at the end of the day. Yeah. Treat yeah. your partner like they're your teammate, not your opponent. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. Exactly. The divorce rate is crazy right now in these streets. Yeah, I'm hearing like left and right people like yeah. know, breaking it up basically. As long as you guys can communicate and as long as you can express like, hey, I'm not really feeling great today and the other person understands and there's some sort of like mercy there between the two of you to each other, mm. not one party to the other and that's it. It's a two-way street. Yeah. As long as you guys have nahalis towards each other, well, you'll be fine. 100%. People like, who don't have any form of, like, um, conflict resolution skills and they see that 
their partner as their competition or their opponent or somebody who they can one up Mm -hmm. that will never last yeah 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 that's why if i'm in a bad mood i'll just tell my husband listen i can't lie it's not you but just know i i ain't with it i don't feel great today yeah yeah you just have to sometimes give them a little warning that's it um you guys went through that together like you're both in a new place you're both you know going through stuff he's do do you know 12 hour shifts i don't know how doctors do it like honestly i'm not gonna lie to you i do not know how doctors do it because i worked in security and i did 12 hours but like their 12 hours is different to my 12 hours it's like, doctor, doctor, beep, 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 and it's not just that, you're making big decisions exactly. as a doctor as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're making big decisions. It's a lot of responsibility. Like I can it's... see the difference when my husband comes home and there hasn't been much like action going on. <laughs> he's like a different person. He's oh. like positive oh. and all that. He was but, like, it's been a slow day yeah, today. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's a junior doctor, so he's not yeah. like, he's not speciali- uh, specialized. He's like new to the field as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the day there is like a lot going on, he's like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> We have to find another way to earn money. I'm like, yeah, let's talk about it tomorrow. You're just feeling too much right now. Yeah, oh. yeah. So oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, but I uh, like understand that. Uh, but I just feel like it, we are easy to like understand like how the work uh, environment can like have a negative impact on us. Uh, but we forget that. For instance, I, I one thing I always dreaded was to become a housewife. That was like my worst nightmare mm. ever mm. i was like i'm not i'm not gonna end up like my mom uh, mm. like like i'm not trying to shade her but of course and she want she didn't want this for us either like mm. that we stay at home mm. and then t- like because whenever i talk to them it's like yeah what did you do today and i'm like uh cooked L- literally and i hate it when yeah, people ask me that i've yeah. been at home bro <laughs> like yeah. what do you want me to say <laughs> so yeah it, you kind of feel like a disappointment sometimes yeah. but then it's just like yeah it's not gonna be like that forever i would be working and then i would be like oh i wish i could just stay at home <laughs> exactly yeah that's why i'm doing a bit of part-time i work yeah, with part-time my mom part-time so i have time I like at that. home and i have time in the office yeah, yeah. and that works perfectly there has to be a me. balance there's a balance there. I'm, I'm the same as you i don't like working too much because yeah. i'm like i hate this place why am i here why am i here why am yeah, i not in my, exactly. in my bed yeah. why am i not at home yeah i want soft life but i'd like money there has to be a balance. I hear it. Yeah. I hear it. But what what did you specialize in? Because you said you, nah, you were I, also a doctor. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not a specialized. I uh, graduated in 2022, so a few months before Isa was born. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was like a general. Yeah, yeah. So basically, when you graduate, you like you just a doctor. Like you basically, yeah. you don't have a title as such. Okay. Uh, you just have the degree. Yeah. And then you have to go into training, which in uh, UK is called mm-hmm. the foundation program. Mm-hmm. There are different ways to get into it, but uh, like depending on where you're from as well, yeah. as in country wise. Uh, and after that, you can start your specialization. Yeah. What do you yeah. want to specialize in? So before I had Isa, I really wanted to do like something at the hospital, like OBGYN, something yeah. like that, because I'm really interested in yeah. like female health. Mm-hmm. Nice. But now I'm just like I need something that's family friendly. I can't like both of us can't be working twelve hour twelve oh, yeah. hour at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now I'm I'm leaning more towards GP. And one good thing is here in UK I've heard uh, is that you can become a GP and then you can have like a sub speciality where you focus on female health. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, so I might like lean towards that. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking that she she'll she'll not be like a kid for the rest of her life yeah so whenever like i feel like she's more uh independent i can think about something else exactly yeah exactly so they're gonna be sometimes we forget that they're not gonna always be two years old exactly. like exactly. <laughs> each year they're gonna be growing yeah. and things oh. are gonna be so different and then you you're know? gonna have school yeah and then yeah. you're gonna have the i hate you mummy yeah mm. yeah it's not fun i mean we get slaps here and there so it kind <laughs> of stays the <laughs> <Yeah>. same <laughs> wait till it it, it, will, it will hurt your heart yeah. The first day she said to me, I hate you, right. I cried. Oh my God. No, legitimately. I, when she, I said, what? And then I burst into tears. She said, and then she looked at me, she was like, oh, 
I really hate you. Wow. Like, ah. She wants you to rub it in even more. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, there's no winning with them when they're like four, four and a half. Yeah. There's no winning. One minute I'll tell her, she'll say to me, I hate you. And I'll be like, I love you too. She'll be like, no, I hate you. I'll be like, hate is a strong word. Okay, she'll be like, I don't like you. And I'm like, okay, I like you though. And then she'll be like, no, I don't want you to like me. <laughs> oh, wow. And then if I'm like, okay, well, then I don't like you. She's like, ah, you don't <laughs> like me. There's no winning. There's There's no winning. It's, it's like talking oh to an irrational God. person. Yeah, yeah. There is no winning. They're very irrational. They're completely irrational. Yeah, they don't yeah, make yeah. any sense. I didn't go through terrible twos. Yeah. I thought when she was two, I was waiting like for the terrible twos to come. You know them ones? <laughs> the tantrum. I swear to God, from when she turned three in Ooh. March this year. Pff, it's terrible threes. Yeah, no, we started with terrible, it's not terrible ones. twos. I started with terrible ones as yeah. well. She had a moment, mm. like when she was transitioning from one to two. Yeah. Like between one and two, like a couple of months, she was moving a bit mad. But then she settled when she was two. Like she was, yeah. Jenna was a joy. Yeah. Well, I whole swear year. to God, from wow. three, well, whole it's year. like, now it's like an every day we're beefing. Every day, every day. <laughs> like, I was like, rah, they so this listen. is. They don't listen. They don't listen. By the way, don't tell her that your mum is your mum. Just don't do that. Just call her grandma. I've been saying that. Because though. I mm. explained to her, I'm your mum. Yeah. But this is my mum. Yeah. And now in her head, there's a hierarchy. So you might be my mum, but you're not the big boss here. Yeah. <laughs> Your mum is the big boss here. Yeah. Yeah, so she yeah. don't listen to me anymore. She only listens to grandma. Yeah, so just don't mom. explain that to your kids, guys. Wait till they're like six, seven to explain this is my mum. The senior Listen, yeah. she literally says to me, she goes on the phone she, in every morning. She's like, can we call grandma? I'm like, okay, let's call her. The days that she picks up, she picks up. So she's like, grandma? Mummy did this to me yesterday and she said this to me yesterday and she didn't oh. give me this yesterday and she didn't listen to me and she was rude. And she did a whole report. That's she, crazy. she snitches. Oh like the snitching is real. She snitches. Damn. And then my mum is like, let me talk to your mummy. <laughs> She's like, Nasra, that's not very nice. Don't do that to Hannah. And I'm there rolling my eyes. I'm like, oh. She's like, say sorry to Hannah. I swear, sometimes yeah. I'm like, sorry, Hannah. And it, I've literally played into this, that yeah. my mum is the boss here and I'm not the boss here. So she don't listen to me anymore. I think I've just lost the war. Yeah, you've lost it. I've lost it's, the war. It's too late. There's no going back now. It's too late. I won the battle, but, um, but I lost the war. I actually wanted to talk about something that I saw yeah. on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I was like... So there was a story. This is a true story. Um, man, woman, they were married. They had a baby. As the baby grew older, the dad said, that's not my kid. Take a DNA test. He was like, I have a feeling. Like, she doesn't look like, she doesn't look like me. Wow. Like, maybe it was a different color hair, different color eyes, but he had, like, a strong feeling that his daughter wasn't his, yeah? What? So he, him and his wife are going back and forth. She's like, what do you think? What, do you think I'm cheating on you? Like, what is this? Like, I find, I find it really offensive that's that you think- accusation. That you think yeah. that she's not your daughter. Of course she's yours. He was like, please take a DNA test. She takes a DNA test. That's not his daughter. And it's not her daughter either. Oh, wow. Yeah? It's not hers either. Her baby got switched at birth at the hospital. Oh, my God. Bear in mind, when he found out that the baby wasn't his, like, he was like... I think she found out after that it wasn't hers, but they didn't find out at the same time. But mm. as soon as he found out that the kid wasn't his, he filed for divorce mm. straight away. Because... She kept saying, I didn't cheat on you. Mm. The DNA test is saying that's not his kid. She, he was, he didn't believe her, You're right? going to believe the DNA. You're going to yeah. believe the DNA. And he's like, you, you know, you've been cheating on me. Bye. Damn. I've raised this kid, I think, what, five years? Mm. Like, you've raised this child for five years. And he was still, he still walked away. So he filed for divorce, imagine. So the woman, she also finds out that the kid is not hers and that they were switched at birth. So they investigate. They're trying to find their biological daughter they find out that their biological daughter is in foster care. Oh, wow. Their actual daughter is in foster care because the, the parents that took that one are drug addicts, right? <gasps> so her actual daughter, bless her, is in, is in a care home. Their daughter yeah. is in a care home and they've been raising someone else's child. Oh. What do you do in that situation, guys? Bring the daughter, we'll raise both of them. Yeah, that's why I've do already too. formed an attachment with this Sorry, for five I've years. I've raised this child for five years. This I'm is not my child. I'm not going to exactly. just dump this child. And your dad is a waste man. Your mum is a waste man. They're drug addicts. What are they going to do for you? Why would I send him to child to foster care when I've loved this child for five years? 
With, I'm no, raising no, both no. of them. I, if he wants to go, deuces. I've got two kids now. No, but just no, you imagine, no, but can you imagine the heartbreak when you actually realise that your child was in a foster care home this whole time? How could Everything they have been years. through. Huh? Everything they have been through. Like, this poor child. Yeah, with those parents and everything. Imagine... And they were, fu- they were, like, literally, he was about to divorce her and yeah. everything. And then... Oh, he stayed with her? Hmm? I don't know what happened. Oh. I think, I'm assuming he was like, okay, you know what? This is crazy. Like, I'm assuming <laughs> once he figures out that she didn't actually cheat mm. and that both of them are hurt in this because their actual daughter has been switched at birth, you know? But, um... Oh, my God. Isn't that insane, guys? You know, my mum, when, um, when my cousins were born, my mum was telling me that they would they would have one of their siblings with them at the hospital to do the night shift mm-hmm. and stay awake while the mum rested mm. because it apparently it was really a big thing where my cousins were born in like Tanzania and Kenya. Where they switch? Where they would switch babies. On like, purpose? For fun. No. For fun. For bands. You're joking. Yeah, because you know sometimes babies, they all look the same at this yeah, age. Yeah, like yeah. they all look like a little and wrinkly <laughs> and look a little bit creepy. Yeah. They're just the same coloured ones. Yeah, yeah, that one's the same colour as that one. Switch. But they've got to make sure it's the same gender, though. Or, yeah. or they've got to make sure there's yeah, two yeah, girls yeah. they're you switching. Know, my, my aunt said to me one time, yeah, there's there were so many stories of women who were sleeping like this. They were co-sleeping with their baby, so their baby was here and they were asleep. And then in the middle of the night, somebody would come climb through the window in the hospital and they just snatch their baby. Yeah. Gone. Baby snatches. I think they was doing rituals. And what were they doing with the babies? Rituals. Imagine you've just gone through nine months, you've just gave birth to this baby, you've just experienced all the trauma of labour, and they're sleeping with the baby in the hospital, and somebody comes and snatches your kid. Tell you, best believe I'll jump out the window and go after them. Like I'm running. <laughs> best believe the whole the whole hospital is getting it. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna steal someone else's baby because I'm so sorry. No, that yeah, that story. I'm gonna really, have to steal someone's baby. That story really messed me up. Like someone was sharing so it on TikTok sad. and they said, you know, when, when you give birth and you're in the hospital, make sure someone, like your partner, your birth partner, like make sure someone follows them. You know, when yeah, they do their ear yeah. hearing test and the eye test, yeah, make sure someone's there because it could accidentally happen, yeah. you know? Um, but It shouldn't, but that's, that's why really like, you really up, have guys. to trust the, like, the hospital when your baby's there, especially when they're in the NICU. And you're not with them twenty four seven. Yeah. Uh, you don't know what's happening at night. Uh, and that that case in the UK that happened that uh, there was a nurse or something mm-hmm. that uh, was a Lucy Letby. Lucy Letby, yeah, Lucy was, Letby. the yeah. devil herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's no. That's I hope scary. she's suffering in prison. Apparently, she was getting beaten up. Yeah, I hope they keep continue beating her up. That's crazy. In that instance like that, I agree with the violence. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's what happens though. When they find out that you've done th- things to kids, yeah. they yeah, you deserve it. They get beaten up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can she? D- she killed like six babies. Exactly. I think was it six? Or was, was it, it six more? or more? I ah, just one. The number six is calling out to me. Uh. But the, and you know what the sad thing is? There were people who were saying, "Why is it that whenever she's on shift, some baby dies? Mm-hmm. Why is it that whenever she's here, something goes wrong?" And you know what's crazy? They Nothing got all, flagged. They were all talking amongst each other. Yeah, but nobody no flagged anything. Actually, Not, yeah. I think there was one one guy, one Asian guy. He's he's he was on her team or something. I think he actually reported it, and they didn't they didn't believe him, or they just yeah. I think mm-hmm. one of them actually did try and report it, but yeah. nothing was nothing was changing. She's evil. Mm-hmm. Like I kept thinking, like, what's her story? Like, why is she doing it? Like, what's like, what was she thinking basically? When yeah, you know, some people they just do it for the thrill. Honestly, they're sick. They're just thinking to themselves, like, what and would happen if I did it, this? Like, not once or twice, but like, what, she's sick. six times or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you she know, I, actually, I just remembered something. You know what she used to do? Whenever she used to uh, hurt babies or kill them, she would contact the parents through Facebook like she would stalk the parents Mm -hmm. she would contact them and say hi I was the nurse that did this and that she would send them like a card to say I'm sorry the parents of course would message back and be like thank you so much for everything you did for looking after my child and I feel like she used to get some sort of uh, like how do I explain it she used to get a kick out of the parents thanking her for at least trying to help do you get what I'm saying yeah 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 
that's what she used to do she used to contact the parents so in my mind i'm thinking so you you like the attention that you're getting from these people like you want to be the hero sometimes yeah. they hurt babies so that they can make them better like yeah. they're sick they're actually sick but, um, i'm really happy that you're okay now though yeah, like after you. everything you've been through i just keep thinking of moving to a whole nother country like it just keeps playing in my head oh, but um yeah. i know that's random from what we were just talking about mm -hmm. but it just keeps popping into my head every time i look at you i'm like oh my god the thing is, I, I really didn't deep it until someone mentioned it. Like, mm -hmm. like you have been through a lot, like with yeah. having a baby and at the same time moving to a new country and at the same time being isolated, all, all of these things like together. And like, even though we had been married for two years, it, the two years was basically a bit like long distance. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't really lived together at that time. So when mm -hmm. we started, like everything just basically hit at once. And, uh, and when someone mentions that, I'm like, okay, maybe... It's a lot. But mm. at that time, I was like, yeah, that's how it is. So I keep still thinking that, oh, I wish my like my daughter could, could grow up with my parents close by, with her cousin and all of that stuff. But like that's one thing I miss uh, yeah. or will miss in the future as well. Oh. Or maybe, God knows, we end up moving to Norway. Oh, you know, my gosh. Listen, I think he should. Yeah. You never know. Because I love Norway. You know, at this moment, you're thinking to yourself, I'm yeah. going to be like this forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know But you sure. don't know yeah, where yeah. you're going to be next year, exactly. this time next year, the year after. Like, it's your kids bad. might eventually grow mm. up with their grandparents in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. So also, the pay is better. Probably less sure. work. For sure. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice place to grow up and to have children, to raise kids. Yeah. Norway is very green. Yeah. Like, it's so nice to raise children there. And also, don't they pay you to have more kids? They do, innit? They pay you every time you have a kid. Yeah. They give you like three thousand kroners. I try not to mention the, these <laughs> things, but it's like, yeah. They pay you to have children. Like, so if you're not no working, children. if you're not working as a mother, you get like a certain amount, mm -hmm. which is like basically a kind of uh, maternity leave mm. uh, for each kid, basically. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but I think there, there was a reason for that because the population, like percentages, yeah. it was very high in like pensioners and the elderly mm -hmm. and there was like n there was a lot of like gen z's and a lot of like um teenagers and a lot of like um adolescents but there were no babies and they were they were afraid the government were afraid that like okay well where's, where's all the where's all the new you know the new where's the reproduction like exactly. what's going on with this reproduction so they were like okay let's pay people to have children of course there's always a reason why they why and they, they help you things. with like yeah. pram costs with like with yeah. like everything i mean like it's expensive there, so yeah. like that's the least. Yeah. Even though we bought stuff from UK, mm -hmm. it was just that like, more affordable. Yeah. Oh, we're running out of time. It's been so nice having you. Yeah, same. <laughs> oh, but it's been really no, nice. honestly, I I love that you found something that kept you, mm -hmm. your feet on the ground. No pun intended. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah. you're not serious. <laughs> But um, no, I really love that you found your your hobby that can keep you sane, basically. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I really hope that you find your feet again. Well, I think you already did. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, I really, really wish the best for you. Like you. future, yeah, future, future wise, wherever you guys end up going, yeah. wherever life takes you. Um, I really wish the best for you. Yeah. And yeah. Do you Thanks. have any last words you want to share with us? Uh, it's been really nice being here, honestly. And I know for sure I will keep listening to you guys' podcast. Oh. I look forward to it, it every time it comes. I'm like, oh. okay, now I have something for my runs. Or I have something when I'm doing the dishes or oh. uh, cooking or anything, yeah. like for my breakfast. So, and it's been really like, Actually, that's one of the things that helped me through the worst because mm. now I could like listen to someone who was actually wording the stuff I was feeling. Yeah. And you don't find that like everywhere because like even when I sp speak to my husband about these things, he can't really 100% understand, understand because he's not like on that side of parenting. Yeah. So just hearing that from you guys and actually also learning how to deal with th those mm. things and wording those things has been just like, okay, I feel validated. Oh. And I feel like that's what what also keeps me going, knowing yeah. that there are people who are in the same like boat, basically. That makes me so happy. Yeah. It does. Oh, that makes me so happy. 
<laughs> no, I love that for you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank you, you for coming. Me. Thank you. Really. Next time you, you watch best. our podcast, you're going to be like, that's me. <laughs> yeah, it d- depends. I, I really like seeing myself or listening to myself. Oh. But let's see. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. That's so yeah. sweet. You never know. But um, thank you guys for tuning in. Please like and comment and Please subscribe. Please subscribe right now while you're, yes. while you're here. Just click we the subscribe button. We are nearly button. at 2K subscribers. So I think we're two subscribers away. <gasps> press, the yeah, press, yeah. The, press the button. Press the press the button. Alright guys. It's been nice. It's been nice. Enjoy the sun. Did you go to the park today? Get out. Get out of the house. Go to the park. Enjoy the sun. If Enjoy you see us weather. in the same clothes in the next episode, mind your business. <laughs> yeah. That's another one. Before you lot say, oh, you lot you lot wear the same clothes to the studio sessions. It's on the same day. It's on the same day. Okay. <laughs> um but I've been Suya. And I've been Nasra. And we're entry level and leave. And leave. Yeah. And then leave. Bye guys. Oh.